Hi everyone, it's Erin from the Provincial Farmhouse. Today we're going to be doing some French country thrift flips. We're going to be using IOD's Cameo and Trimmings 2 molds. We're going to be using the Vintage Textures stamp and we're also going to be using the Ephemeral Melange Transfer. We're also going to use Jovi Air Dry Clay. You can find a full product list in the description of this video and all your crafting needs on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. Let's get started. I picked up this little wall mail holder from the thrift store for about $3 I think and we're going to give it a makeover today. So I'm going to remove all of the hooks and any other hardware and then I'm going to clean it with Dixie Belle's White Lightning and then I'm going to rinse off my cleaner. I wasn't exactly sure which color I wanted to go with so when that happens I usually pick a light color to start off with and we are starting with Dixie Belle's Sawmill Gravy Chalk Mineral Paint. I'm going to paint the entire organizer in the one light color and this often helps me get my ideas going and if I'm not sure where I want to go with something this is definitely my first step and it's definitely something I suggest if you're not sure how you want to give something a makeover. So I'm going to do two coats of this color and on the front there's a little bit of texture so I am going to change the direction of my paint strokes. This is sometimes enough to disguise any texture without needing to add some sort of texture additive like sea spray. Next I'm going to dust my trimmings 2 mold with some cornstarch and then I'm using Jovi Air Dry Clay in the design down the bottom there. I'm rolling it into a sausage like shape and then working the clay into the mold using the micro rim to get a clean edge. I'm then going to very carefully take my mold out and I'm going to position it up the top there. You can see that I need to make a little bit more so I'm just going to do a partial casting there and then as you can see that fits nicely. I also decided that I wanted to add the same trim down the bottom so after I've glued the top section on using a strong wood glue I'm going to make the same amount of trim for down the bottom. I'm also going to use the same little hooks that came with this organizer to carefully poke holes through the clay. I want to keep those hooks there so I am adding those little holes there so that I don't have any issues getting the hooks back in. The top trim is hiding the previous holes from some screws that were up the top there. I didn't think that we needed those because I'm going to add a hanging attachment. After trimming off the excess clay down the bottom I'm adding some more paint to my castings. I find that if I I do this after they've had just a little bit of time to set up that I do tend to get less cracking so I'm very gently adding the sawmill gravy to my castings. Once my paint was dry, I realized that I wanted to go for some color with this one. So I'm using Dixie Belle's Manatee Gray Chalk Mineral Paint. It's a lovely light colored gray and we're going to paint the entire thing in this gray color. And again, I am just being gentle around my molds. They have had time to set up overnight, but I'm still going to be gentle with them. Once I've painted the entire organizer and let it dry, I'm going to seal the piece with Dixie Belle's Gloss Clear Coat. This is going to be a great surface for our next step, which is to add some white glaze. So I'm going to add some of Dixie Belle's whitewash glaze to my little organizer. I'm paying particular attention to the lovely details of the trim and I'm then using a wet wipe to wipe back the excess glaze. So you can see how it sits there really beautifully in the details. And then I'm adding the glaze to the entire thing and wiping it back. Remember, if you're going to add glaze to anything, it's definitely a good idea to put down a base coat of some sort of sealer. I used the gloss clear coat first, and that's what's giving me the freedom to wipe back as much or as little as I want. Once my glaze has had time to dry, I'm going to come back in and reattach the hooks that I removed earlier. Because I pre-made the holes in my clay, I'm not having any issues getting those back into position. Finally, I'm going to attach a little hook on the back for hanging. And here's our finished wall organizer. 
I'm really happy with this project. I love how the white glaze has really brought out the details in those castings. Let me know what you think of this organizer in the comments. Our next project are these cute little boxes that I found at the thrift store. I thought that they would be very cute on someone's shelf, maybe in an office, and we're going to give them a French country makeover. My next step after cleaning is to add Dixie Belle's French linen chalk mineral paint to the boxes. I'm going to be painting them inside and out and giving each one two thorough coats. French linen is a lovely neutral, especially if you're sick of white, but you still don't want something that is super overpowering. So I didn't feel the need to use any bonding primers this time, but if you have some boxes that are made from metal, for example, you could always use Dixie Belle's Slick Stick Bonding Primer. Next, I'm going to add some elements from the beautiful Cameo mold. So I'm dusting the mold with cornstarch and then working my air dry clay into the design. And I am going to be casting three different designs from this mold. You could also use resin in your molds if you don't have any air dry clay. Next, I'm going to attach my castings using a strong wood glue, and you can see that I've added one to each of the boxes. Next, I'm going to seal the entire box and my castings using gloss clear coat. I don't mind the color of the Jovi Air Dry Clay, so I'm not going to paint those first. My molds have been drying overnight and I definitely recommend leaving them for this amount of time before doing any sort of waxing or glazing. I'm going to be sealing the entire outside and inside of the boxes. This is going to help when we come in with, yep, you guessed it, glaze, but also it's going to protect them from getting chipped with daily use. I'm going to start off using Dixie Belle's Tobacco Road Voodoo Gel Stain. This is a water-based stain, so I often use it as a glaze. You can see I'm working it into my castings there and how it really brings out the beautiful details. I'm adding it to the entire outside of the box and I'm using a wet wipe and a paper towel, depending on how much I wanna wipe back. And then I am going to come in with white wash glaze. This is gonna to tone down some of the brown, but again, it's still giving that that really lovely weathered vintage look that we're after. I'm going to be repeating the same process on the lids as well and also on each of the boxes. I'm going to come in first with that um, tobacco road and then coming in with the whitewashed glaze. Now, if you don't want a weathered look, you could always skip this step or if maybe you want it to look more rustic, you could skip the whitewash step. I found that sometimes I had to come in with a little bit more tobacco road on some of my castings just to bring out the details a little bit more. And that's the beauty of these products is that you can layer, you can wipe back, you can add more. There's quite a lot of freedom with these products because they are water-based. I just love the cameo molds. The detail in these castings is amazing. Let me know in the comments if you've tried this mold. And here are our finished little boxes. I think that these would look lovely sitting up on a shelf or even on a coffee table. I think that they are a very sweet little keepsake box. Perfect really in any room. I hope that this has maybe inspired you to give some of your organizational boxes at home a makeover. Let me know what you think of this project in the comments. Our last project is this little wooden caddy. Again, found at the thrift store for a few dollars. I always pick these up if I can. Wasn't sure I liked the love heart, but I'm just trying to ignore that because there's not much I can do. I am removing that little wooden heart from the front. And then after cleaning, I'm going to give the caddy two coats of Dixie Belle's Cashmere Limited Edition Fall Color. 
This is a really, really beautiful antique sort of style cream. It's lovely and bright. This caddy had a lot of small compartments that were a bit tricky to get into, so I did swap between a small artist brush and my normal paintbrush. Next, I'm grabbing a design from the beautiful ephemeral melange transfer. This has so many lovely vintage style floral labels and seed packets. I decided on this design here and that I was actually going to cut it in half. That's the beauty of these transfers is you can cut them up and arrange them how you like. So I'm just trimming it to make sure that I'm going to have enough design for one side. And then I am cutting out the excess transfer there. I just want it to go in really close near the petals and the leaves and that will be my other design for the other side. So I'm peeling off the white backing and then I'm using the transfer stick to rub and burnish the design down. Now I haven't sealed my paint but I'm not having any trouble with the design coming off or adhering. Once I have the transfer down on one side, I am going to organize the other side. You can see I'm going to actually piece together some of the excess transfer that I cut off from the other side, just down on the bottom there. You'll see me add that soon. So I'm just using the transfer stick again. This did actually have some more lettering than the other side. So it did take me just a little bit longer to get this design down. But again, it was pretty easy to transfer this image. To balance the design a little bit more on the left there, I'm using some of my off cuts that I cut from the other side and I'm just going to layer them there again just to sort of even out the sides. So I definitely recommend that you keep all of your off cuts and trimmings of your transfers and decoupage paper because you never know when they're going to come in handy. Next, I'm going to use some medium grit sandpaper to distress the edges of the caddy. I'm then going to use the crackle stamp from the Vintage Textures stamp and I've just brushed on some Tobacco Road Voodoo Gel Stain and you can see I'm just sort of pressing it randomly and lightly and heavier in some areas. This looks like wonderfully aged crackled paint and I thought it went really beautifully with this project. So I'm going to add that over the entire piece just in random spots. You could definitely use IOD's inks for this project if you're going to give it a go. I just decided to do the Voodoo Gel Stain because I had it on hand and it's a much more subtle look. certain areas I felt that maybe I'd been a little bit too heavy with the stamp so I'm using a wet wipe to wipe back some of the stamping and that's the beauty of these water-based products is that if you get to it before it's dried all the way you can wipe it back when needed or just paint over it. And finally I am going to seal the entire piece with Dixie Belle's flat clear coat. And here's our finished caddy. I could definitely see this being used in the garden to carry around tools or seeds or even at the center of a dining table for cutlery. It really is quite a versatile piece. Let me know what you think of this project in the comments. I'm really happy with how our French country thrift flips turned out. Please let me know what you think about today's video in the comments and please hit that like button if you liked it. If you're not already, I would love it if you could hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of our DIYs.
If you liked today's projects, make sure you check out our other thrift flip playlists. We've got lots of inspiration for you guys to check out. You can find all the products used on today's video on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. Thanks for watching.